And one of the things that surprised me about the show was how many instant cameras I saw there. And uh, our viewer, longtime viewer, Michael Quattrochi wrote in uh, with a, a note about the Impossible Project. And I had heard about this a while ago, but never gave it much thought up until I got this note from Michael. And uh, what they have done is uh, they went out and bought the last production line of the Polaroid Film Company. I think they hired a few of their employees also because uh, Polaroid basically shut down the company. They are now essentially a licensing uh, holding company. They license out their name for other people to use. So they stopped making film, uh, but there are still millions of Polaroid cameras out there from uh, the 80s and earlier that I'm sure would love to maybe be taken out of the closet and used every once in a while. So they sell some very expensive film packs here. I think these uh, go for about $24 for a pack of eight, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, eight, eight uh, prints per pack for $24. Not cheap, but they did it. They reformulated the film from scratch. And uh, these cartridges that went into these cameras, uh, in many cases, were pretty complicated complicated because not only did they do all the film developing inside the mechanism and inside the uh, little paper that runs through, uh, but they also have batteries to power the camera too. They were kind of an all-in-one uh, cartridge there. So they've done it all. They've got everything working the way it used to, and it works with uh, all of the old Polaroid cameras. They also have now been uh, bringing in and refurbishing old Polaroid cameras to get them working again. So these are some of the cameras they have for sale right now on their website, uh, including the old Barbie camera from the 80s there. So you can uh, get your uh, old uh, Polaroid back in action if you want to do that and buy the film from them. And Michael also pointed me to a new camera that they've put together here. It is called the i1, and it's a Polaroid camera, but it has some newer tech integrated into it, so you can use your phone as a remote control, and I think it does have a live viewfinder that goes back to the phone. Not digital, though, so it's a one-shot camera. You take the picture, and you get the picture printed, uh, but you can't do any reprints or store any JPEGs on it, of course, but uh, kind of cool that they're developing some new stuff as well. And I think this is one of the areas where uh, the Internet that makes this kind of niche hardware possible. We've seen this now in the retro gaming world with the uh, analog NT Mini that I love, as well as the retro USB AVS that I also love, some reproductions of old NES hardware that doesn't appeal to a mass market, but has enough appeal that you can find on the internet to uh, make something viable. And they're clearly able to do that here with employees and cameras and uh, film packs and everything else. If you are a fan of Polaroid and have an old camera kicking around, you can still use it. You're just gonna pay a little bit for the film. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.